Hi, my name is Jack, founder of PosterSpy.com, and welcome to another Let's Talk Art video. This time we're in Łódź, Poland, to chat to award-winning illustrator Bartosz Kosowski. So, let's talk art. First off, thank you so much for being part of the Let's Talk Art series. I'm a huge fan of your work, I've been following it for a very long time. So how did you first get into poster art? To be honest, I've always liked uh, movie posters, right? I remember when I was a teenager, I liked the works of uh, Franciszek Starowiejski, and he created those really, you know, detailed works which were like really dark and gloomy at the same time, and uh, very symbolic. So I like his work. Then I also like the works of Waldemar Świeży, who, uh, who is another Polish poster artist. And um, he, he, he used, uh, you know, smudges and dots and splashes to create the, 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 what seemed to be an abstract, you know, art when you looked up closely, but when you just like stepped back and, and looked at it from a distance, these were like really realistic, you know, uh, posters. So, so I, I think I've always liked that kind of stuff even when I was a kid, right? And, um, and uh, recently, recently meaning, in, I think back in 2013 or 14, I created my, my first uh, movie poster. So this is how it all started. One hugely popular piece of yours is your Lolita poster, which uses a lot of really great visual metaphors. How did you get started on that piece? I created this piece back in 2014, and it was for uh, a show at Spoke Gallery, and it was a Stanley Kubrick show. So actually, when I was preparing for the show, uh, I had three ideas for the posters. One was Lolita, the other, one were, the other two were uh, Clockwork Orange and uh, The Shining. And uh, I did some sketches and I thought, well, probably, you know, I'll go with this one. So it was not like a decision that, you know, I did, didn't realize that the poster will become very popular. I remember that I came up with this idea after, you know, having a look at the, the original poster for the film, which depicts Sue Lyon, the actress, in heart-shaped glasses and a lollipop. And I started just like looking at the lollipop, drawing lollipop, and then at one point I saw something more in it. So this is how it all began, right? And so this was the, the, the most difficult part. It's, for me, personally, you know, it's always the most difficult thing to come up with a really strong idea which could, you know, symbolize the film in one simple uh, picture. So even now, the piece is hugely popular. Uh, you've had people email, even call you to figure out how to get it. Yeah. How does that feel as an artist knowing that, was it four years ago that you created this piece? It was, yeah. That people still want it? I mean, it feels great on one hand, uh, because it's always, you know, you create things. I'm not saying that you create things for people, right? Because you create things because you want to create things, right? But but it's also, it, it, of course, it's it's a great, you know, kind of feeling when you know that, you know, people like the stuff that you do, right? And they, 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 they email you or they call you right just because they want to get it right uh, so it's really great or people just like tweet it reblog it you know talk about it even though very often they don't even mention your name because you know that's the internet thing right they, they just post stuff and not necessarily you know just crediting the artist which i kind of understand uh on the other hand um this was actually the first proper movie poster that I've created, yeah, so, so I kind of set the bar pretty high <laughs> and uh, really difficult once you start with something that people really like and, and which is very, which is a very strong image to, to come up with something equally good, right? When you set the bar high, you have this kind of thing like, like musicians have when they record the, the first album, which is really good, and then people start, you know, criticizing them like, ah, oh, you will never, you know, do something like that again. I hope I will. Uh, and I, it, you know, it's not that, that I, I stopped there. Right? I, I keep, I kept creating posters, you know, I, I did, uh, well, plenty of posters actually yeah, after that. Are there any films in particular that you'd like to make a poster for? Well, there are plenty of those, right? Uh, the, the, I, I have a list of films that I really, really like and I, and I, and I think at some point I might create posters for. Uh, one of them is definitely uh, The Moon uh, by Duncan Jones, right? Uh, it's a great film, uh, I love it. Uh, and uh, 
I even had some, you know, rough sketches for, for that. But then on the other hand, you know, the, the original poster for that film is pretty strong. Yeah. And, uh, and that's, that, that's the problem. I mean, it's not really a problem, but you know, once you've got a really strong poster, the original poster, you know, you don't want to, you know, go up against that. Uh, or you have the feeling that, you know, what, what's the point, right? <laughs> uh, I really like the films of, uh, Wes Anderson and uh, I actually did a poster for one of his films, actually two of his films. Um, I did one for Grand Budapest Hotel and then the other one uh, for Life Aquatic. I'm actually working on a new poster for Wes Anderson show, uh, which will be later this year. Yeah, so yeah, I'm working on one, definitely. Yeah. A lot of your film posters, like your Lolita poster and like your Jaws poster, use very sort of symbolic and simple imagery to put across a kind of really important idea. Mm -hmm. Is there a reason you approach film posters this way? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think there is. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, no, the reason is that even though I like posters which depict the characters from the film, and I sometimes do those as well, right? I think that the, the, the strongest posters are those which are more metaphorical. I remember what uh, Saul Bass once said, and I love his works, right? Um, he said that, you know, the... the, the a really good poster is a poster which is simple, yet thought-provoking. So, because if the, the image is simple, you know, people are just like, oh, it's a nice, clever image, right? But if it's something more than that, people will come back to it and then think like, oh, you know, this is very, you know, there's more to it than just, you know, the surface, right? So, so I really like the work of, you know, Polish poster school, uh, and this was the, it wasn't really an artistic movement, it is uh, more like a phenomenon, um, which was uh, back in the, like, between 50s and 70s in Poland, right? So there were a lot of artists, poster artists, who created those uh, metaphorical um, posters, uh, which used, uh, you know, uh, visual metaphors to show uh, the film in a way, the, the content of the film, right? So, so uh, while in States at that time you had posters which were just showing the, the, the main characters, of course they were, the, the characters were beautifully painted or drawn, right? But these were just the characters, yeah? Here in Poland we had those, you know, really marvelous artists who, who, who painted, you know, really weird looking posters with um, uh, handwritten typography very often, right? So with, uh, you know, something which was very abstract, yeah? And the funny thing is that um, they created those posters because very often they didn't even watch the films that they were creating posters for, which may sound weird, but on the other hand, it's not so limiting, yeah? Because once you see the film, you know what the characters look like and you know, you know, you're somehow limited by the universe of the film. Whereas where, where you approach a title uh, without, just, just by reading the synopsis, for instance, right? you try to think in a more metaphorical way. And that's a nice way to go, I think. The, the works that you've mentioned, Jaws and Lolita, um, use similar idea. I just wanted to create something which would uh, be clear for the viewer. You know, it's like, even if I cut out the, 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 the credits and title from the film, probably if, if you ask someone, what is this poster for? They would guess is probably Jaws and Lolita. Well, of course, everybody knows the original Jaws poster, which is a very powerful image. You can see, you know, the, the shark and the swimming girl, and the shark is just like, just about to just like devour her, right? And it's a good poster, it's very powerful, but this is, you know, very straightforward. But I wanted to create something more subtle, so you can see the, 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 the vast, you know, ocean with little waves and just kind of smooth kind of, surface and then you just see a little fin of course the shark is there right it's just you don't have to show the real shark with really huge teeth to 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 to, to scare people out yeah? because sometimes you know the, the 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 what's more scary than just showing the monster is just knowing that the monster is there but you can't see it so that, that was the idea yeah <laughs> Your work often contains, in fact, almost always contains a lot of texture, which adds a lot of depth to your work. Is there any advice you can give to emerging and aspiring artists who want to add texture to their own stuff? I mean, 
It's really, it's actually a really difficult question because I cannot tell anybody to 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 add texture, right? Because it's always up to the the, the illustrator whether they want to have like really flat surface or some texture surface. Yeah, I went for the texture because I just feel it looks good. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and actually I use a lot of um, textures which I got from you know scanning uh, like this really kind of rough paper and uh, and different surfaces and things like that because I wanted to 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 have this analog feel to to the to the work which is actually created digitally another piece of advice which is connected with that is that I always tell people to learn how to draw with pen and paper before they uh, go digital I'm not saying it's a must but if you want to have this really analog feel to your work it's good to know what you're trying to achieve, yeah? Uh, and it's good to be able to achieve it uh, if, you know, the power is down and you have just a piece of paper and a, and a pen, right? So, so it's very useful, yeah? And I, and I think that it's very important just to basically learn to, uh, to, to draw in an analog way. Most people know you as an illustrator, but not many people know that before you were an illustrator, you were actually an English teacher. What made you change your career path so kind of drastically? It wasn't really the case that, you know, one day I woke up and decided, oh, I'm going to be an illustrator. I've always liked drawing and I, when I was a kid, I used to draw pictures like every day. When I decided, you know, that I will study English literature and not art when I was like 18 or something, um, it was because I was thinking practically <laughs> that, you know, I could I don't know, for instance, teach English or, or, or do something like this. Whereas if I study art, you know, you never know, right? So, so that was basically a decision like that, yeah? So, but even though I studied English, uh, I kept drawing, you know, all the time, attending different courses and art classes and stuff like that. So when I finished uh, English philology, uh, I thought, okay, maybe it's time to, you know, to do something about it, yeah? So I kept teaching English uh, during the day and uh, I started studying art uh, printmaking in you know specifically yeah so I, I during the day I was just like uh, teaching people English and uh, in the evening I was just drawing and then uh, I was also attending classes right so so kind of I managed to do two things at the same time and uh, once I finished uh, art academy I still kept teaching English for a while. I was getting my first uh, illustration commissions and you know it was a kind of long process so so I was getting more and more of those and uh, and I kept doing two things and at a certain point when I was about oh, it was about like eight years ago I think uh, I thought okay I cannot do it anymore because I cannot have like two regular jobs. So I, I, I thought, you know, I'm going to try uh, doing the freelancing, full-time freelancing, right? And uh, I'm going to just like take a gap year from teaching and see, you know, how it works. And it's been like, what, eight years now or nine years, 10 years and, you know, never came back. So, so, so this is how it worked, basically. It must have been pretty exhausting when you were trying to juggle teaching and illustration at the same time. But I guess it's also a, a kind of, I don't know, a kind of example that it's never really too late to start if you want to. Yeah, precisely. It's just like, you know, um, I, you know, I started getting like proper uh, illustration jobs when I was about 30. Yeah. Uh, I think so, yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, it's never too late. You're at a point in your career now where you do get a lot of freelance work and obviously organising your time can be quite difficult when you've got a lot of work to do. Are there any practices or things that you do to make organising your time easier? Yeah, I mean, definitely if you work from home, uh, well, not necessarily from home, but if you're like self-employed, if you're like full-time doing full-time freelancing, right, you have to be very organised here yeah, because there is no manager no boss who can tell you like, okay, get down to work, you know, do this, do that, because, you know, you have to do it yourself, right? So, you know, basically, I think it's very important to, you know, plan your day, week and month uh, and, 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 and stick to the plan. My, my typical day uh, is just like, you know, I wake up at about nine o'clock or something and then eat some breakfast and then up till midday, I usually 
do the email stuff. So it's like I respond to, you know, emails, you know, from different clients and, and things like that. Yeah. And, uh, and then I start working, let's say properly, yeah? <laughs> because, because, because it's not that if, if you work from, you know, if you're doing freelancing, uh, you have to do all the things yourself, right? So, so you have to remember about that. Yeah? And uh, being organized helps. You created a poster last year for a Polish film called I Am The Killer. It's a piece that I'm really interested to learn a bit more about. Is there some stuff that you can show us? Yeah, sure. I mean, let's go and check it out. Yeah, so this is the poster for I Am A Killer. Uh, uh, this is a poster which I created uh, about a year ago. And um, I was uh, approached by the film producers who wanted to have something different than just the, like the regular, you know, photoshopped head of the main character. Uh, as you can see, it's like large format print. It's like the, the typical um, film poster size, which is one meter by 70 centimeters. And, uh, and it was all, you know, drawn uh, digitally uh, and then made into a poster, right? Generally, uh, you know, it has a lot of details and, uh, and I started with uh, drawing both of the characters, uh, because I thought uh, it would be nice to see where to put the tear in between them. Uh, so I thought, okay, let's 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 have them both, uh, you know, drawn uh, in full size, which uh, you can have here and and somewhere else. I do have the the, the other character. Yeah. Okay. So as you can see, it was you know uh, it was all. Uh, drawn like this uh, because in the, two fil in the film these two are the main sort of yeah these are two main characters because th this is the, the film which tells the, the story of uh, which is set in back in the 1970s I think in Poland uh, in uh, the region of um, like Silesia, and uh, the region is struck by a series of uh, uh, brutal murders on women. There are two protagonists. One is uh, the the young police officer whose job is to you know catch the the, the killer, and the, the second person is just the, the the man who is supposed to be a killer, but in fact he's not. I, I wanted to 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 have this dark imagery in the poster, right? So this is why I went for like the textures and then and specific even brushes, because when you look closely at the, 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 the way it is drawn, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the line work is uh, kind of, you know, mm, kind of gritty and then... And, 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 super detailed yeah. and textured. Yeah, yeah, so this is, this is uh, what it all started with, yeah, so... It was a long process. One of the, the initial ideas was to use the handwritten typography uh, in the poster. Yeah, the title based on the, the handwriting of uh, the, the, the real killer uh, whose story is depicted uh, in the film because it's based on a true story. So I found this letter uh, that he sent to the, to the police and uh, as you can see, I just like cut out separate letters and just like based the, the, uh, the typography, the title like exactly on his handwriting, yeah? But uh, although uh, it was appealing to me and although the idea seemed very nice, I'm not sure if it worked very well as a, you know, as a typography on a film poster, right? It's a very nice idea, but sometimes, you know, nice idea doesn't mean that it will look good <laughs> in the poster, right? So, so, so I thought maybe, you know, I could do something else, right? So. Uh, I looked for some other serial killers uh, that I could use, right? So I came across the, 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 the letters of Charles Manson and I based uh, the, the, the typography on his handwriting. This is exactly the same way I took out the separate letters and just like kind of redrew it in my way, yeah? But also uh, didn't work. So, so the next uh, approach was to, to go a bit crazy and use uh, typography, which is uh, also handwritten, but not based on any any anyone's handwriting. Yeah, so so this is actually uh, a division into three, so slightly different than in the final. Uh, and I just like, you know, I wanted to experiment a bit with this, you know, really rough uh, handwritten letters, which are somehow hidden 
uh, beneath the, 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 the middle part of the poster, right? And, uh, and, uh, and yeah, this is, was one of the versions, but uh, we tested it against uh, a focus group and uh, it turned out that you know, people wanted to have something more traditional, yeah? Uh, because the poster itself is totally different from what you can see in the streets, yeah? So, so adding uh, some extra, you know, alternative stuff was a bit too much here yeah? so so we went for uh, finally we went for the, the 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 just like regular font well not regular like distorted font uh, which is actually uh, used in the final yeah so yeah so how many concepts did you actually create for this piece before you got to this more sort of final or well, the final one we saw earlier uh -huh. i don't know just like many yeah <laughs> uh, lots. yeah 30 40 yeah oh. there were there were lots of them this is the, something which is the closest to the final, but as you can see, there are just. I know they're they look pretty similar, but these are just like different tones that I wanted to to use. Um, wanted to test, right? So uh, more bluish, more I don't know, more texture like. You know, uh, it's just you know when you work on a film poster and you know that you know it's like a serious work, <laughs> uh, you. It's good to test many different ways, yeah, many different uh, versions, yeah. So these are just eight of them. So if you put like another thirty, we would be there. Cool. I think it's really interesting to look at this as well, and uh, especially as we spoke about your influences mm -hmm. and to see how they've been brought into this poster. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for mm -hmm. you know showing us this piece and talking through the, the creation process. Mm -hmm. It's been really interesting learning about it, and thank you so much for being part of the Let's Talk Art series. Well, thanks a lot. It was my pleasure. <laughs>